am here with another read aloud today and it is called Pie in the Sky by Lois Ellert. And when we're reading the story, what I really want us to focus on is two things. One, the steps of how a pie is made and two, something called text and graphic features. Can you say that with me? Text and graphic features. Now, text and graphic features are something that the author and illustrator will put into their story and it'll give us more information about the story or what our whole main idea is. Sometimes they're words and sometimes they're pictures. So that's what we're going to use our eagle eyes for when we're reading today. So let's get started on Pie in the Sky by Lois Ellert. This tree was here when we moved in. Dad says it's a pie tree. Now is that silly to you? Can you really have a pie growing on a tree? So let's see what Daddy says when he means it's a pie tree. Now down here, these small words, it's kind of like a game of I spy. So we're gonna look and see what we see in the picture. Now this brown stuff is the rough bark of the tree. And I see a dragonfly, I see a caterpillar, and I see a blue feather right in the corner. I've never seen pies growing on trees. Wouldn't that be something to see? In my picture, I see green grass, ladybugs, caterpillars, a dragonfly, but still no pie. Dad showed me buds on our tree today. He says that's a good sign, but we won't know till summer if we'll get a pie. And when the dad means buds, he means the, on the branches. You might even see buds outside your house right now on trees. They're little tiny. Um, they might be greenish. That's showing that the leaves are starting to grow on the tree again. I see yellow leaves with green spots and brown buds, but no pie. Okay, the buds are all the way up here. They might be really hard for you to see, but they're right there. Winter is finally over. Sweet spring is here at last. Buds we saw last fall are bursting into bloom. So on this tree, the buds are turning into flowers. I know on the tree in my yard, the buds are turning into leaves right now. I see green leaves and white blossoms, yellow pollen dust, blue eggs in a brown nest, yellow honeybees all over here, and black stripes on a yellow butterfly, but still no pie. But now a damp wind is blowing and all the flower petals are falling down like rain. Here you can see them falling down like rain. I see white petals and dark gray tails. I see dark brown branches. I see a beautiful bird, but still no pie. I wonder where this dad is thinking the pie is coming. You know what? I think something's finally growing on that leaf of ours. So now look, the flowers have turned into something else. What does it look like the flowers have turned into? I see green leaves where the flowers were, and I see these orange and green circles. I wonder what they are. Now on this page, a text feature is right here. The big white words are my story. These features are telling us what are in the pictures. So I see orange and lime green balls, yellow moon and stars, a pale green moth and a dark blue sky, but still no pie. Well, those birds sure sound excited. I wonder what's going on out there. I see a robin's rusty red breast and white speckled throat, a gray catbird with black crown and tail, and purple violet clouds in a pink and orange sky, but still no pie. And if you look, those balls that we talked about in the last picture that were orange and green, now there's some red ones on growing on our tree. Oh, now I see what has them so excited. I see brown cherry pits, red wing tips on cedar wax wings, 
and white rings around Robin's throat's black eyes, but still no pie. And if you look, you can see the birds were excited because they're getting some food, some cherries. So the tree that was growing was actually a cherry tree. It's a cherry feast. Look how excited those birds look. I see orange-breasted orioles, black spots and tips on butterfly wings, red ripe cherries, and bright blue sky, but still no pie. But hey, raccoon, save some for us. You see the raccoon here? Here's his little feet, his tail, his eyes. At last, Daddy says it's time for us to pick the cherries. I see the gray wings of a black and orange tail, a yellow beak, a silver gray pail, and a blue a blue sky, but still no pie. So there's their pail, another word for bucket with their cherries inside it. So I wonder what we're gonna use, use those cherries for. So now the dad and the child are gonna start making a pie. And if we look really close, and it'll be hard to see, I'm gonna zoom in. These are the text features I want us to look at. The story has the ingredients and the steps and the recipe to make a cherry pie. And instead of putting it on a recipe card or a big piece of paper like you might see at home, they put it right in the story. So these small white words mm -hmm. are telling us the ingredients to make our pie. So first we wash the cherries. And down here this text feature says four cups of sour red cherries. We squeeze out all the pits and save the juice. So here's the pits and the juice. So the first thing our pie is we need to wash the cherries. Then we put the cherries in a bowl. We add the juice. So here's the juice and my text feature says one and a half cups or a half a cup of juice. Then we add the flour. Here's my flour. It says five teaspoons of flour. The sugar, one and a third cup of sugar and stir some cinnamon half a teaspoon of cinnamon and they have to stir it all together with a spoon so I'm gonna see if I get closer might be hard for you to see but do you see the little white words here there are my text features that's showing me how much of different ingredients they need next we mix the mixture together to make a dough so here's the dough we roll out two crusts and press one in the pan then we pour the filling in. So here's my crust. They put it in the pan and here's a text feature that says we need a nine inch pan. The tan is the crust and there's my cherry filling. We add the top crust, put the pie in the oven and wait for it to bake. So here on the oven mitt, which is what you use to get hot things out of the oven, it has more text features that tells us more steps of the recipe to make this pie. So let me read that. It says I need to press around the edge with a fork to seal. I need to cut a design into the crust so steam, that's hot air, can escape while baking. I have to preheat my oven to 450 degrees and bake for 10 minutes. Then I have to reduce the heat to 350 degrees, bake for 35 to 45 minutes until brown. So after it bakes, now dad can cut the pie. He puts a piece for each of us on a plate. Wow, that was the best pie ever. I wonder if the birds would like it too. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think they'll like it? I think so. This will show you, did they like it? Yes, they did. So in our book, Pie in the Sky, was there actually a pie up in the sky? <laughs> no. What that title means is that our pie actually came from a tree. So the dad and the son or the daughter had to wait for the cherries to grow on the tree before they could make their pie. And we focused on text and graphic features in our story. And in this story, the text and graphic features were the little ingredients, the little recipe steps to make this pie. Now I wonder if any of you have been doing some baking at home or some cooking where you had to follow the recipe of something. I know my family and I, we baked an apple pie the other day and we had to follow recipe steps just like in this book. 
So in your activity today, I want you to think about all those steps that we saw on the different cups and the different measuring tools and the big mitten and think about why those are important. Because if we didn't have them in our story, would we know how to make this pie? No, we wouldn't. So text and graphic features add a lot of extra information to our story that help the reader understand better. So in your assignment, you're going to need to write down the steps of how the pie was made, or you can draw steps of how the pie was made. Until next time, bye!